Rendering is a lot like photography. You need lights and you also need cameras. So let's take a look at how to create cameras in Maya. Now, the first camera that you've used in Maya is probably the perspective window. This is actually a camera. And by navigating in this scene, we actually are manipulating a camera. But let's go ahead and create a separate camera in Maya. Now, we can do this under the rendering shelf. There is an option to create camera. We also have under Create, Camera. So we have Camera, Camera and Aim, which aims the camera at a target. And then Camera, Aim and Up, which aims the camera at a target, plus has a control to tilt the camera. We're just going to work with a simple camera. So let's go ahead and create this. Now, as you can see, it comes in the scene a little bit small. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and scale this up just a little bit. And that won't affect the camera at all. And now I have a camera in the scene. And as you can see, we also have an attribute editor for this camera that allows us to control it. But the first thing I want to do is to look through the camera itself. And we can do that by just changing which panel we're looking at. So under panels, we go into perspective and we should see camera one. If I select that, I am now looking through my camera. And I can continue to navigate my viewport as I always have. And this allows me to simply place that camera in the scene. Now, if I hit my space bar to hop out to a four view, you can see I have the camera selected here. And if I hover over my camera one viewport, you can see that as I manipulate my viewport and change my view, the camera itself is moving. Now, we can certainly go into our other viewports and change the way our camera is working. We can rotate the camera, we can move it, and so on. Now, cameras are objects in the scene, so you can also attach them to things. So if you want a camera attached to a car or something like that, very easy to do. Now, let's take a look at the attributes for our camera. Probably the most important one is angle of view. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight my camera one viewport and make that full screen here. And so we have angle of view and focal length, and these two are connected. So focal length is the 35 millimeter focal length of the camera. By default, it's set to 35, but if I want to, I can make it a longer lens, say 50 millimeter lens, and that basically zooms in. Or if I want, I can go really long and say maybe 135 or something like that. And what this does is it zooms in and it also flattens out the perspective a bit, just like you have with regular cameras. Now, one of the things you should notice is that as my focal length gets bigger, my angle of view gets smaller. So if I increase my angle of view, my focal length will shrink. Now, if I go the other way and say, make a 16 millimeter lens, you'll see that my angle of view goes way up. Now, if I truck my camera in, you'll see that at this wider focal length that I'm getting a lot more perspective. I'm getting kind of a fish eye effect. And if I brought that down to say 12, you'll see that I'm getting a major fisheye effect here. And that's typical of cameras with a 12 millimeter lens. So typically, we'll want to keep our lenses in the normal range for 35 millimeter cameras. So somewhere between 28 and 50 or so. I'm going to go ahead and make this a 50 millimeter lens. And as you can see, we get a pretty good view of our scene. Now, in addition to this, we also have what are called clip planes. Now, clipping planes determine how far into the scene the camera sees. Now, by default, the near clip plane is very close to the camera. and Typically, we'll keep it that way. The far clip plane should also be kept to a large number. Now, if I bring it down to, say, a small number such as 50 and back out of the scene, you'll see that the scene starts to disappear. And that's because the camera is only seeing 50 units into that scene. Now, typically, we'll want to keep this at a much bigger number. So I just type in a one with a lot of zeros and hit enter. Now, one of the things you may encounter is that you'll go into a viewport and certain objects aren't visible. And nine times out of 10, that's because your far clip plane got changed. So you just need to go back in and bump up the number. Now, in addition to this, we have some technical controls here that allow us to control the film back. So if I have this pull down menu here, I can do anything from Super 16 to 35 to 35 anamorphic. 
And so we can also dial in these controls manually. We have things such as the physical size of the camera aperture, film aspect ratio, and so on. We have a lens squeeze ratio for anamorphic, and so on. Now, if we go down a little bit further, we also have what's called depth of field. Now, depth of field will basically blur out parts of the scene and create focus effects. So if I keep this at five and maybe go bring my f-stop down to say 1.8 or something like that, you'll see I'm getting a lot of blurring. But as I zoom into the scene, you'll see it starts to come into focus. So I can get really nice focus effects in Maya using depth of field. Now this particular type of depth of field is for Maya renderers. Other renderers may not pick up on it, but they usually have their own depth of field. So just check what the type of renderer you're using to make sure it can use this. Otherwise, use the one that they provide. Go ahead and toggle this off. And then I'm gonna go down one more to environment. And that is the color of the image behind the camera. So if I zoom out here, and I'm gonna go ahead into my render settings and I'm gonna change this to my hardware and that will give me a very fast render. And I'm going to do a quick render current frame. And so as you can see, we have black all around this scene. And that's because the background color is black. If I turn it up to white and re-render this, you'll see that I get a white image. I can change this really to any color I want and it will reflect on the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back down to black. So this is one way to get a new background color in your scene. Another way is to use what's called an image plane. Now image planes are basically images that are fixed to the camera so that the camera always sees that image as the last thing in the scene. So if I create an image plane here, I'm gonna go ahead and press this button brings me to this menu, and you see we've got these kind of yellow guidelines here, and that tells me that this is where we're gonna put our image. So I'm gonna go into my file menu, click on image name, and in source images, we should have something called clouds.jpg. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And now I have that image behind my camera. Now, no matter where I move my camera, that image will always be my background image. So if I zoom in here, and take a look through the window, you'll see I can see clouds through the window and so on. Now, if you wanna see how this works as kind of the magic trick, we can hop out to these other viewports here. If we hit six to turn on hardware texturing, you can see this. So if I move my camera, you can see how this image plane moves with the camera. If I do view, select camera, you can see that when I move my camera, left or right or in and out, that image plane follows along. Now I can select this image plane in the window and also delete it if I want, and then that image plane will go away. So those are some of the ways to create and manipulate cameras in Maya.